Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you a cool little Edge TX video on how to bring up a summary screen after you finish a flight. Just the other day I was getting out of my car and as I turned the ignition off, right in my center console, the computer brought up a summary screen showing data from my trip, how many miles it was, how long it took, my fuel consumed, that kind of thing. And I thought, you know, that'd be really cool on the radio. And for a long time, I've actually used these summary screens. So I created a little telemetry screen that shows my RSS minimum and current, my T power max and current, my RQLY minimum and current. These are all values that I'd want to understand after a flight to kind of analyze my data. So it's a little summary screen, my RX bat minimum and the current. I'd like to have that shown as a summary at the conclusion of a flight. And while I can easily navigate by pressing the button or swiping the screen, one thing that I realized is that I don't actually do it. <laughs> so I thought, why not have, have the radio help me out and show me my summary screen after I complete a flight? And then while I was at it, I thought, you know, there are other screens I'd like to have while I'm actually flying, not my main screen. So when I first turn a radio on, I like to see my flight timer, my total time, the little logo of the airplane that I'm flying, and you know my trim condition, maybe a couple of other things. But what happens while I'm actually in the air? None of that is really very useful, but telemetry from the receiver is actually useful. So when you're running Express LRS and you have telemetry, you can put this widget on the screen to give you an idea of what's going on with your link quality, with your packet rate, with your transmit power, and your range. So wouldn't it be nice while we're flying, we get ready to go fly, we turn on a page that actually could be meaningful while we're flying. So if we see a problem, we lift the radio up and say, okay, I see my transmit power jumped all the way up and maybe how long our flight has left. And then when we land and get on the ground, let's have the radio bring up a summary screen. First, I'll show you how it works and then I'll show you how I built the logic. On my radio right now, I've got my main screen and my throttle lock is in the locked position. So when this switch is toward me, that means it's locked. Now, if I move that switch to the down position and I have no telemetry, nothing changes. The screen doesn't change. This only starts to happen when you actually have telemetry. So when I disarm or arm, no changes to my radio screen at all. The next thing I'm gonna do is power on my receiver. Now, once I power on my receiver, you'll see telemetry pop in here in just a moment. And when that pops in, that indicates I'm ready to go fly. So now when I hit my arm switch and I arm the craft, we go right immediately to our telemetry page that would be useful to see while we're flying. So now let's say for example, whoops, we're not ready yet. We're gonna shut the throttle off or disarm it because we forgot to check something. Notice it goes back to the main screen. This is a cool little trick I've built into the logic that makes it really exceptionally useful. We'll go back to arming the model now, or we've made our correction, we're ready to go fly. We arm the model, we go to our telemetry screen for flight, and we advance the throttle. And as we advance the throttle, you see my flight timer ticking down, and at the end of the flight, we bring our throttle down to zero, and when we disarm the craft, instead of going back to the main page, we go back to our summary page, which is very cool. And of course you can change it. It doesn't have to stay there. You can move off the summary page, but the radio automatically brings you to the summary page. And if you're ready to go fly again and you either reload your model or reset your timer, I've got a timer reset here on T5. When I do that, it brings me back to my main screen and I'm ready to go fly again. If I turn the receiver off and I have no telemetry, when I unlock and I move my throttle stick, my timer doesn't start moving. And I'll show you why that happens in just a minute. So that's the basic operation. Let's recap. We have our radio disarmed. We turn our model on and we start seeing telemetry. We'll get telemetry here. Okay, so now we're ready to go fly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and arm the craft. So I'll hit the arm switch. That brings us to our in-flight screen. You can see because I have my throttle advanced, my flight timer is ticking down. And then when my flight is over, I bring my throttle back, I disarm the craft, I get my summary screen. And to reset it, all I have to do is reset my first timer and we're back to our main screen. All right, let me show you how I built it. The first thing we'll do is press the telemetry button and I'll show you my screens. My first screen is the main screen. That's my generic screen when I first load up a model and power up the radio, okay? So I've got my model icon here on the right, my flight timer, and my total timer, okay? Simple enough. 
The next screen that I have set up, and by the way, you can do this in any order you want. It doesn't matter, okay? It, doesn't, it just doesn't matter. So in my second screen, I have that set up to be my summary screen. And you can see based on the layout that I've chosen with a four by four, if we hit set up widgets, you can see all my summary data. And again, use whatever summary data in whatever format you want. It really doesn't matter. It's whatever makes you happy. In my case, this is what I want. You might, you might have a different need. Maybe you're running an altimeter and you wanna see your max altitude. You can do that here as well. So set up your telemetry values in the screen layout the way it works for you. And then after that, the last thing I have is my in-flight telemetry. And on that one, I have my Express LRS telemetry widget here on the left and my flight timer here on the right. So those are the only three screens that I have. Now let's show you the logic. I'll press the model button and we'll go right over to logical switches. And I only have three logical switches. That's all it takes to make this work, which I think is really cool. Okay, so there are three states that we're interested in because we have three screens. The first state is when we have telemetry and my craft is armed. Remember that triggers that telemetry screen to pop up. So L01 simply says it's an AND switch. Let's edit it so you can see it. It's an AND switch that says when you have telemetry and the SH switch or your arming switch is activated, then I want L01 to go on. So let's do that. I already have telemetry. I'm going to disable my throttle lock by pushing SH forward. And now that I do that, L01 goes live. Now the second condition we're interested in in L02 is when my flight timer is less than eight minutes. My flight timer is starts at eight minutes and you can do this for whatever value you want. You can say, I want the summary screen only after I've been flying for three minutes. In that case, you wouldn't use 758, you'd use five. My timer is set at eight minutes, okay? So all this says on this logical switch is when my flight timer is less than eight minutes, seven minutes and 58 seconds. So I only need to be flying for two seconds for this to count. And my throttle lock is brought to the lock position. That's post flight. When that occurs, that's an interesting event. That's L02. And then the last one, L03, simply says when we're not showing L01, meaning nothing interesting happening with telemetry and the throttle unlock, and when we haven't met the criteria of L02, when those two conditions are not true and my throttle is locked, that is condition number three. That's the main screen. So now let's look at the special functions that show how we move these screens around. The next page, special functions, L01. Remember, that's when the SH switch is armed and we have telemetry. I'm gonna go ahead and activate that now. You'll see special function number two go active. That sets the main screen to number three. If we back out, there's main screen number three. And just to show you in the telemetry setup, that is main screen number three, okay? So L01 goes active, we wanna see main screen number three. That's how we do the first one. Special function number three says when L02 goes active, set main screen number two. Remember, that's my summary page. L02 only goes active when the flight timer decrements and comes down from its peak, remember 758, and we lock our throttle. So when I bring my throttle lock to the lock position, that's when L02 goes active. So what I'm gonna do is advance my throttle so that the timer counts down a little bit, and now I'm gonna lock my throttle. There's L02, that sets main screen number two. So if we go back to the main screen, that's our summary page. That happens only after we've had a flight. Now remember, L03 only goes active when L01 is not true and L02 is not true. L02 is active right now because my flight timer is less than eight minutes, so we had a flight and my throttle lock is on. That's what brings up the summary screen. Now when I reset the timer, it will bring us back to our general information screen, which is screen number one. So I'm gonna hit my timer reset, which is T5 up, and you'll watch L03 go active. Timer one reset. Timer one reset, so that means my flight timer is greater than 758, so L02 is no longer true. L01's not true, L02's not true, my throttle is locked, that means we're back at my summary screen, which is right there. There's one other thing you need to understand about my logic trickery. I use the telemetry and throttle lock in one other place. You can see right here on L01, I have an AND switch for telemetry and SH away. I also use that as the switch that activates my timer. And the reason I do that, L01, the reason I do that is because if I turn telemetry off, I'm gonna turn telemetry off, the receiver is now off, 
and then I unlock the throttle and advance the throttle stick, you can see my timer doesn't move. I do that because I don't want my timers moving if I don't have telemetry. So that's one other place that I use the telemetry and throttle lock technique, and that's in order to manage my timer when I'm actually on the bench and not flying or connected to a receiver. Okay, let's run through it one more time so you see how it all works. My throttle is locked right now. My throttle stick is being moved. Nothing's happening. I'm gonna unlock my throttle. I'm gonna move my throttle stick and notice we stay on my general screen, no changes. So nothing happens unless we have telemetry. Now I'm gonna relock my throttle. So it's locked now, bring my throttle down to the zero position and I'm gonna bring my receiver online, which means you should, should see telemetry pop up right here in just a moment. Okay, we've got our telemetry. Now I'm gonna arm the craft. That switches us to our in-flight telemetry screen that's useful information while we're actually flying. And now I'm gonna, now keep in mind, my throttle stick isn't moving, so my timer hasn't gone up yet. If I disarm, we go back to our general screen, okay? We fix our plane, get ready to fly. Okay, we're arming again. We go fly, we advance the throttle. The timer starts decrementing. Once I get past my mark of seven minutes and 58, and I bring my throttle to zero just to simulate landing, but you don't have to, it's not part of the logic. And then lock the throttle, we go to our summary page. And then to go back to our main page, we simply reset timer number one. I hope you like my little crash course on using logic to manipulate the telemetry screens on your Edge TX radio. If you like this kind of content, make sure you smash that thumbs up, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.